The price of Tesla's full self-driving software option package keeps going up, and that's fine, but we think Tesla needs to make a change. We'll tell you what it is and why next. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring today's show. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. I'm living proof of this, and the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have your hair left. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. I wanna stress the easier part, because let's be honest, if you're like me, you're busy. With Keeps, your treatment is shipped right to your door every three months. Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA-approved medications for hair loss, which makes it more affordable. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash now you know, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Don't put it off. Go to keeps.com slash now you know and get 50% off your first order. All right, so maybe you're a big fan of Tesla's full self-driving software. Or maybe you think cars will never drive themselves and humans will be behind the wheel forever. Either way, Elon believes in it. So he has been offering the full self-driving software package as an option on Tesla cars since 2016. I paid $2,500 for my full self-driving package on Sparky seven years ago. And no, Sparky cannot fully self-drive. It can use autopilot version one on highways, but that's it right now. And we also both paid $3,500 for full self-driving on our Model 3s, um, Zach in 2017 and me in 2018. Uh, both of these cars are on the full self-driving beta program right now, and we've shown you what they can do. They can both drive on city streets and highways pretty well most of the time. Shut up. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my God. Go, 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 go. go. God, that took too Woo! long. Yes. It. Woo. Tighter, 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 tighter. tighter, tighter. tighter, tighter. Yeah, no. And like we said, Elon believes his team will attain full self-driving. So as the abilities of the software have improved over the years, and they have improved, Tesla has raised the price of full self-driving. Take a look at this chart. So currently, Tesla is charging $12,000 for the full self-driving package. Now, look, I want to be clear here. I believe that Tesla will be the first to create a full self-driving car that can reliably drive without a human driver. Do I know when this will exactly happen? No. There is a long tail of very hard work ahead for the Tesla autonomy team. They haven't even really started implementing Dojo yet. And remind everybody, what is Dojo? This is their neural net training system. I mean, right now, most of the training sounds like it's still very manual and relatively slow. When they can get Dojo fully implemented, which Elon says could be as soon as this summer, I think the speed with which they can label and train the neural net is going to increase rapidly. But there are still so many edge cases, so many things that humans can do well and the computers still have to learn. Are Teslas a year away from this? Two years? Three? Or is it 10 or 20? I think personally, they're about two years away. But what do I know? I'm just looking at the rate of improvement so far and what I'm guessing the rate of improvement will be. I could be way off. And herein lies the problem. Tesla is charging $12,000 for something that if it existed today, would be an incredible value. Right, $12,000 for a full self-driving car option is cheap. As Elon has said, the true value of full self-driving is more like $100,000. And that is because a car that can drive itself can do all the work of an Uber times three every day without the Uber driver. But don't forget, I said, if it existed today. If it existed, if it existed today, today, would be, would be an, incredible an incredible value. The fact is, full self-driving does not exist today. Full self-driving beta is amazing, but it's not full self-driving. It's software that is on its way to becoming that. So if you pay $12,000 today for full self-driving, you are essentially betting that Elon is gonna be able to pull this off like he did with SpaceX rockets that can land and be reused, a feat that still, by the way, blows my mind. But even if you believe he will do it, to pay $12,000 for full self-driving means that you think he can do it while your car is still on the road. It doesn't do you much good if Elon pulls off full self-driving that you paid $12,000 for in 2022, if he finally gets it fully functional in 2035 and your car is now at the junkyard. 
And let's be honest, Elon has admitted he's been wrong about the FSD timeline. This is a much harder problem than even launching and relanding a rocket on a drone ship. As impossible as that feat sounds, driving a car around in the unpredictable world and not crashing it is one of, if not the hardest, engineering problem humankind has ever attempted to solve. So I can give Elon a pass for being a bit off with the timeline, but he has sounded so sure over the years that it would be ready that many of us, me included, have paid for the technology and been pretty sure that it was coming next year. Tesla car next year will probably be 90% capable of autopilot. 100 to 200% um, safer than a person by the end of next year. Autonomous rover taxis for Tesla next year. Full autonomy uh, next year. When do you think Tesla will solve level four FSD? I mean, it's looking quite likely that it will be next year. So here's the problem for me. I was happy to pay $2,500 seven years ago for full self-driving, even though it hasn't happened yet. I'm happy to have supported the effort to make this a reality, but Tesla has not really been able to even use all of this money to pay for salaries and buy computers and pay for Dojo and stuff. But you gave Tesla $2,500, right? Yes, but Tesla has to put money that you pay for FSD into what's called escrow. That's essentially a bank account that they can't touch until they turn on more features. Now, I don't know the formula that they've been using, but we've heard Tesla's CFO, Zachary Kirkhorn, talk about this from time to time during quarterly earnings calls. Tesla can only release part of the funds related to how much further they've gotten with FSD. So, for instance, if FSD today is able to do, let's say, 40 percent of what FSD will do when it's complete, then Tesla can only take 40 percent of what you pay for FSD and actually use use that money. The rest has to stay untouched in an escrow account. So that's what you're upset about? That Tesla is only able to use some of the money you paid? That's part of it. But what I'm really concerned about is that Tesla sells FSD as part of the car you buy. And from reports we've seen, it doesn't appear that you can sell your car with FSD to the next buyer. So for instance, let's say I want to sell my 2017 Model 3, which is out of warranty, and I want to buy a new 2022 Model Y. Okay. I paid $3,500 extra for FSD, so I should be able to sell it with the FSD that I paid for, right? I mean, it's got all the hardware. But when I go to sell it, let's say I sell it to you, once I report the sale, Tesla will shut off FSD. So you'll go hop in the car, try and start using some of the features like auto lane change, navigate on autopilot, auto park and summon, and they won't be available to you. Tesla will have shut them off and you'll have to pay Tesla again, now at $12,000 for the FSD software package. And that's my problem with how Tesla is doing it now. It's not fair to charge me for something that may never happen while I own the car. It's not like I get a refund when I sell the car. Refund? Right, like it's not like I get the rest of the money that's in escrow. That stays in that account. Nothing seems to happen with it, even though, what was the point of having an escrow account? We believe that Tesla should be selling FSD as a license. Now, we aren't the first people to suggest this, and I'm not exactly sure how it would work, but we have some ideas that I think most people would be happy with. The first would be that just like that copy of Age of Empires you bought back in 1997, you own the license to it. If you still have the CD and the code from the manual, you can boot that game up on any computer that will support it and play it today. Okay, so basically, let's say I decide Sparky has had its day, I sell it, I buy a new car, maybe a Model Y, and so you're saying I can move my FSD license to the new car, to the new Model Y? Right. Now, you might be saying, well, hey, I'm a Tesla shareholder, and I don't like the idea of you being able to continually move your license from car to car. So here's another part of the idea. When Tesla comes out with their truly 100% level five autonomous software version 1.0, not beta, they ask you if you'd like to activate it and bind it to your current car. So I could have sold Sparky, transferred FSD to the new Model Y, but then I crashed it, bought a Cybertruck, transferred it to that, and then full self-driving comes out? Right, at that point, you can decide whether to turn on full self-driving for that vehicle specifically. If you do, it's bound to that vehicle and cannot be exchanged. All right, so this would solve the problem lots of people are running into. They bought FSD, paid anywhere from $2,500 to $12,000 for it, thinking it was gonna happen pretty soon. However, like you and me, Sparky is feeling pretty last gen and both of our Model 3s are out of warranty. Right, we artificially don't want to buy new Teslas right now because the full self-driving would disappear and our investments would go up in smoke, essentially. 
So this version of the idea would benefit Tesla in the form of increased sales and happy customers. Because I think that the take rate of full self-driving has been relatively flat. As features have gone up, so too has the price. But sales in general have been going up too, which means that I think the number of FSD takers has gone up over time. And they paid more. So this is essentially a ticking time bomb of people who are going to get really upset as their cars get old, like mine already feels, or as we've been hearing from lots of people who have lost their cars due to accidents. And I'm not saying that a license is the only way to do this. You might be yelling at your screen right now, Zach and Jesse, Tesla offers subscriptions for full self-driving. You don't need to buy it. But two points here. Number one, the subscription at $199 a month is more expensive than buying it. Because let's do the math, basically 60 months, that's five years times $200 a month, mm -hmm. is the $12,000. So after five years of monthly subscriptions, you're paying $2,400 a year for FSD more than if you just bought it. Number two, and even more importantly, right now, if you want to buy a Model Y, like we reported on Tesla Time News this week, Tesla is making you wait four extra months, a September delivery instead of a May delivery, if you don't buy the FSD with the car. Now, I understand when Tesla was cash poor a few years ago, but now Tesla is sitting on about $18 billion in cash. And like we talked about, because they have to put most of that $12,000 in escrow, Tesla doesn't even get to use it right now. And this doesn't solve the problem of Zach who bought his car seven years ago. Sparky is getting pretty old. You're getting through the extended warranty. It's getting to the point where it's like, yep, time to get a new car. And here's the problem I have. We don't know the exact number of people who've paid for full self-driving. We do know that there's been a take rate of about 35%. So if we do a little back of the napkin math, there's about 2 million Teslas on the road. 35% mm -hmm. have gotten full self-driving. So let's just say there's 600,000 owners today who have paid for full self-driving. Those Tesla are your biggest fans. They believe in you, Elon. They believe that full self-driving can be a reality. They've paid for that. And today they make up a big chunk of your drivers. But let's say Elon is able to pull off full self-driving in 2026. By then, there should be about 10 million Teslas on the road, give or take. So that would mean that if no one else bought full self-driving because it was too expensive, you'd have about 600,000 owners who bought it. That's about 6% of your owners that are waiting for their full self-driving. By 2026, a lot of those cars will probably have been sold or in accidents or don't work anymore. And so you're going to have a lot of kind of angry owners like me who are like, I never got it. And that is this ticking time bomb that Tesla hasn't really had to deal with. Because, you know, for people like Zach, who spent only $2,500 on a car that cost at the time $140,000, yeah, that wasn't a, a big price. But for people who are spending $12,000 today, yeah, maybe full self-driving comes out in two years. That'll be great. So anyone who bought it for $12,000 today is going to be very happy in two years. What happens if it takes an extra year? Next year. Two years. Next year. Three years. Next year. Suddenly, my car is out of warranty. Well, and what happens to the people in the next few years who keep buying full self-driving at more inflated prices? You know, $15,000, $20,000. And if it does take Elon a bit longer than he thinks. So each year that goes by is a long time to own a car that you've paid that much extra for. And here's the other point. Back when I bought full self-driving in Sparky, I was telling everyone, Elon says this is coming soon. They're going to drive autonomously from L.A. to New York. Just you wait and see. Yeah, 2017, that's what's going to happen. And then... Every year, Elon would say something like, it's just around the corner. We've almost figured it out. And so as each year went by, I got less excited to tell people about this amazing full self-driving feature because I was like, well, it's been a few years now. It's been a while. And I, a lot of my early friends were like, so how's uh, Sparky doing? Is it driving across country yet by itself? Um, No, but did you see Elon said it's going to happen next and year? Fine. All of this is fine. So long as when full self-driving comes out, Zach can triumphantly come back and say, see, it took a little bit longer, but my $2,500 investment was all worth it because now my car is driving around picking people up. However, your car right now doesn't have full self-driving beta because it has old gen hardware. And here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the Rivian problem. Mm -hmm. As we reported a couple weeks ago, Rivian all of a sudden one day announced a 20% price hike, even for early reservation holders. Without any warning, 
or anything. And the only thing that changed Rivian's mind to drop that was the outcry that people had. And so within a day, they were back to the original price. Didn't make me feel very good as a first day reservation holder because I was like, so at any moment, Rivian can just kind of change the, the policy. And that's what I'm worried about here. I want to know that Tesla has our back. I want to get an email from Tesla that says, hey, you were an early supporter. We really appreciate you. We're going to take care of you. Maybe they don't give me any specifics. Maybe I just know that, oh, okay, I feel good. They're going to take care of me. Or maybe they give me some ideas on what they're going to do for me. Like, you're going to get discounts on things. You're going to get this and that. And then I'll just know that, okay, they know this is a problem and they've got my back. But instead, it's taken years of tweeting at Elon for him to even admit that Sparky should get upgraded hardware. And he tweeted out a while ago, oh, yeah, you'll get the new hardware. I haven't gotten an email from Tesla on how that's going to happen. Can it physically happen to my car? I mean, that's a lot of changes to make to my car. And you might be saying, Zach, you are a super early adopter. How could Tesla possibly make you happy? I would argue you're a canary in the coal mine. If if this is the way that they're going to treat you, someone who paid uh, over $130,000 for your car, how are they going to treat the people who paid only $50,000 for the car and $12,000 for full self-driving? When I've you know been driving my car for two or three years and I crash it and suddenly, oh, that $12,000, uh, oh, you didn't insure that because and you bought it after the fact or, or a number of different reasons where, yeah, that, that investment is going to go away. Look what happened with Rivian. Shareholders filed a lawsuit soon after Rivian made that announcement. I'm afraid that Tesla could be in for the same problem where you don't want to make a change because you were sued into it. Mm -hmm. You want to make a change because you did it for the right reasons. And so now is your opportunity, Tesla, to say before this becomes a problem that it won't be a problem. That'll create such a good brand feeling. Then if you wait until everyone's upset at you and then make some kind of, you know, gesture after the fact. Because it won't cost Tesla anything. It, for people who have already paid for full self-driving, guess what? They really don't want to be paying the $12,000 for a new full self-driving on a car that, you know, they just sold a car and they couldn't sell it with the full self-driving that they already did. So that already puts a sour taste in their mouth. And they've been waiting for, in your case, seven years, haven't gotten it, even though it was always a year away. Next year. It's so frustrating for those people. Yeah. And I can't even put Sparky on full self-driving beta. Like, so I can't even appreciate any of the new work they're doing because it's still on the old mobilized system with AP1. And you might be saying, yes, but you paid less for this because what? It was a risk. It was guaranteed. It said you will get full self-driving. Right. If the car doesn't exist, what happens? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. But if you could transfer this software license from car to car or from person to person. Exactly. Maybe I, I sell it with the license or I say, I'm going to keep the license because right. I think it's going to be worth more later. I think that that would just make people feel a heck of a lot better you'll, you'll, in their purchases. And you'll increase your take rate, Tesla. I mean, I'm more likely to buy it as a license than I am to buy it on a car. Because right now it's a huge risk for me to be saying, OK, well, the car costs about fifty thousand dollars. Do I want to add another twelve thousand dollars to the price of this vehicle that isn't worth it to me at all. I mean, unless I really wanted like a, I'll be honest, a fairly buggy, uh, full self-driving beta system, which doesn't really like, it's not like I can just be like, drive me to work and I'm going to go relax. It's not a level three or level four or level five system. I would argue you could sell the license without the car multiple times over. As a business person, I might want to buy a thousand FSD licenses, not with cars, just licenses that I can hold on to and either sell or use in the future. And I mean, maybe that's not what Tesla wants, but they cannot continue going the way that they're going. It would have worked, yes, if, if full self-driving had come out 2018, 2019, 2020, I think that everything would be right with the world. But now we are starting to creep up to the point where there are a lot of Tesla owners who purchased a car with full self-driving and now we're getting to the end of life with that car. They want a new car. They right. weren't going to drive this car forever. Some Tesla owners want that, but many want the latest and greatest thing. Right. And so what are they going to be doing when they're saying, OK, uh, Tesla, how are you going to be taking care of me? Right. And if this was an open fact that everyone kind of knew what was going to happen, I think that everyone would be able to breathe a sigh of relief instead of going like, Ugh. 
And this is why we talk about being VPs of special operations at Tesla all the time, because we realize these problems from the owner's perspective, and we know that there's ways to solve them that don't hurt the stock, that don't hurt the company, but really create more brand value and more loyalty. But of course, we don't have all the answers. This is just an idea. This is just a thought. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What solution should they have? Should they be just saying, well, yes, yeah, screw you uh, early Tesla customers who paid money for something that they never got? Or should they be switching to a full license model? Or should it be that you can transfer it, you know, one car or maybe two cars before it goes away? What, or maybe what? it's subscription only. Right. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. We'll see you next time. Now, now you know. know.